in saline environments, plants must adjust its internal chemistry in order for it to survive. Carbohydrates, amino acids, and compatible solutes can help the plant lower its water potential. The only downside of using this tree that it requires a lot of energy. So the viable option would be mediating the influx and outflow of ions. The mediation of ions play an important role in lowering the plant's water potential and the uptake of minerals. Meaning the plant should accumulate more ions in order for it to attract water and to remain turgid. The only problem with this is that too much ions can be toxic to cytosolic enzymes. And to minimize ion toxicity, ions must be stored and accumulated in the vacuoles. And because sodium chloride is the most abundant salt in salinity stress, transport proteins that store sodium in the vacuoles are critical. Another critical component in reducing salinity stress is the element calcium. Calcium helps by signaling specific proteins to enhance potassium and sodium selectivity, which we're going to discuss in this video. Another important factor that governs the ion's homeostasis is the pH levels and the membrane potential. The change in pH acts as a secondary messenger, signaling that it is undergoing stress. And in some salt tolerant species, cytosolic pH levels increase. The shifting of pH levels is likely due to the movement of hydrogen ions in the apoplast or the vacuoles. And in salt tolerant rice, combination of cytosolic alkalinization and vacuolar acidification is found. And good thing there is a sodium and hydrogen antiporter that is found in the vacuoles, which is very convenient for the plant because this is the main protein that stores and accumulates sodium in the vacuole. Membrane potential also plays an important role due to it is the potential to move ions possibly in and out of the cell. Positive ions are attracted to the negative side of the membrane and the negative ions are attracted to the positive side. And maintaining a negative potential inside the cell is crucial in salinity tolerance. And the reason for this is to maintain a high concentration of potassium inside the cell and too much sodium can interfere with the homeostasis of potassium. Thus, maintaining a balanced sodium and potassium ratio inside the cytosol is a key ingredient in salinity tolerance. And the main protein that is responsible for the shifting of pH levels and membrane potential is the hydrogen pumps or hydrogen adenosine triphosphatase. The increase in salinity also increases the activity of these hydrogen pumps. And there's also an extra hydrogen pump found in the tonoplast, which hydrolyzes pyrophosphates, which is the hydrogen pyrophosphatase. Another important protein that facilitates the active transport of sodium outside the cell is the SOS1 gene, also known as the salt overly sensitive gene, which functions as a sodium and hydrogen antiporter, meaning it transports hydrogen into the cell and sodium out of the cell. And this protein is also regulated by two sets of other genes, which is the SOS2 and SOS3, which we will be discussing later. Another gene that is found in the plasma membrane is the KUP1 or the potassium uptake transporter and the TRH1 which means tiny root hair. And the name implies that this gene has an involvement in the formation of root hairs. Both genes function as a potassium absorber which is crucial in balancing the potassium and sodium ratio. And there is another potassium transporter which is the ATHK1 also known as Arabidopsis thaliana high affinity potassium transporter. And in salinity stress, its ability to take up potassium is inhibited. The protein will now function as a selective sodium transporter which controls the uptake of sodium. A study in transgenic tobacco has shown that overexpression of ATHKT1 maintained a potassium accumulation under 200 millimolars of sodium chloride while the control group decreased its potassium content and increase its sodium content significantly, which means overexpression of this gene might enhance salinity tolerance in other plants. Another gene that is important in balancing sodium and potassium ions is the AKT1 potassium channel. It is found that overexpression of this potassium channel enhances salinity, osmotic, and drought resistant by increasing the total amount of potassium in the cell. In terms of calcium mediation, the gene ACA, which also means auto-inhibited calcium 
adenosine triphosphatase, pumps out calcium from the cytosol to the extracellular space, and the ACAs in the tonoplast pumps calcium from the cytosol into the vacuole to maintain calcium homeostasis. And in the tonoplast, genes that mediate calcium is the cax one and two, which means vascular calcium hydrogen antiporter. It translocates calcium and other metal ions into the vacuole using the proton gradient formed by the two hydrogen pumps. And the last but not the least gene is the ATNHX, which also means Arabidopsis thaliana sodium hydrogen antiporter. These genes are responsible for the storage of sodium in the vacuole. The compartmentation of ions in the vacuoles reduces cytosylic damage caused by ion toxicity. And in transgenic tomato plants, salt tolerance were enhanced in plants overexpressing this gene. So next, let's discuss the SOS signal transduction pathway and its role in ion homeostasis. Under salinity stress, the plant cell activates a calcium channel which increases the total cytosylic calcium. The increase in calcium then activates the SOS cascade by attaching to a calcium binding protein which is SOS3 and the binding of calcium activates another protein which is SOS2 which is a serine threonine kinase. Kinases are known to be like an on switch for enzymes which uses phosphates as energy. SOS2 will then activate the SOS1, which is a sodium and hydrogen antiporter, which causes a subsequent extrusion of excessive sodium from the cytosol. SOS2 kinase also interacts with other proteins located in the tonoplast, such as the CAX1, NHX, and the hydrogen adenosine triphosphatase, indicating that SOS2 plays a central role in regulating transport proteins. In summary, factors that helps in alleviating salt stress are maintaining a balanced sodium and potassium ratio by upregulating transport proteins, an increase in cytosylic calcium, an increase in hydrogen pump activity, the compartmentation of excess sodium in the vacuoles, and the upregulation of the SOS cascade. Thank you all and I will be discussing more plant stresses in the following episode. So, thank you and peace.